<laughs> Let's talk about uh, money and family. Is that's a top, that's a topic that everyone likes talking about, um, <laughs> or or nobody likes talking about. about. There's a lot of families that don't talk o money. Oftentimes, I don't like talking about money. So yeah. this goes back to uh, I'll tell you about my childhood. When I was growing up, single parent childhood, and I wasn't taught taught about money at all, and so I grew up having no understanding of it, no understanding of saving, no understanding of spending, uh, and it took me till I honestly till my forties till I started. Uh, really thinking about what I want to, how I my, my, want my money working for me. Um, uh, what, how, in your um, years of growing up when you were a child, what did you learn about money and how did you take that uh, learning into your career as a football player uh, and as someone who handles money today? Yeah, it's a great question. I mean, I would say we we grew up, I wouldn't say middle class, I'd say probably a little bit like if I really looked at it, like probably a bit on the lower class side. And, and that's just because my, my parents worked in the forestry industry mostly, sawmills and such. And that, that business is, is cyclical, right? It's lumber is trading at $420 a, you know, a unit and now it's down to 180 and shit. Now mills are closing, you know, no one's, no, no new logging operations are going on and it's just boom or bust. And so we, there was, there was probably some good times and, you know, there was a lot of bad times. And so, you know, I was, I didn't feel poor. I felt rich because I had everything I needed from my family. Like I didn't feel like I needed anything where at the same time I saw some, some, friends and their families i could tell they had a lot more money than us i could tell their houses were bigger their everything they had they drove was better everything was better bigger yeah. better um but i never felt jealous or i felt like i had everything i needed you know so i mean um with that being said um i knew what i wanted growing up i wanted to never have to worry about money i, I didn't want to have to focus on living paycheck to paycheck i did yep. i wanted to be able to put money away i wanted to go tra like as a, as a round goal as i want to be able to pick up and travel whenever i want to travel if i want to go somewhere and take my family i want to i don't want to have to look at the bank account and be ah uh, can we make it work i, I want to go yep and i want to make it work so that was kind of like always in my mind and sure being an nfl player that solves that problem really yeah. quick <laughs> It helps um, a bit. <laughs> you know, CFL, not so much. Like, you know, but it's a, it, it's a start. Yeah. Um, but, you know, and then kind of, you know, is is a prelude into my wealth management career. When I first got into CFL, won the Grey Cup right away. I know you guys are salty about yeah. that in 2011. That was the that was the tough one. Yeah. Swaggerville, Swaggerville went in and got kicked. Doomed. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, I, you know, I got a Grey Cup check. It's pretty big. I invested in it, you know. Um, yeah. I used, you know investors group and i wasn't very happy with how it went yep. uh you know i didn't realize all of the things that, about the financial markets that i probably should have um being a smart guy math science like nothing can prepare you if you don't understand financial markets and right. how big they are yep. what's offered what's typical and you know what you should expect and i was a rookie completely and yep. so i you know i kind of felt a little bit duped a little bit taken advantage of Cheated, yeah that basically made me want to be able to educate myself to not make any more of those mistakes, manage my money for the rest of my life. But then I had some really good mentors I met in Vancouver that helped me understand uh, how to manage a business and, and, and build a business based on working solely on building portfolios for clients' best interests, right? Yep. Aligning yourself with clients' interests. And so you, there's no, not those disappointments and you can help save those disappointments for people. Yeah, and quite often I'm not starting with people who or might be making those mistakes right now. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm working with usually individuals that are, you know, households of, you know, three hundred, four hundred, five hundred million plus. Yeah. Um, you know, so typically they've already figured things out, but you know they're looking to um, find more value in what an advisor and their team could provide, and that's yeah. that's what I'm doing now is you know enhancing everything that they they are able to do, um, but. It all started from knowing how I wanted to, to, you know, what I wanted to do with my life um, and how I wanted to have financial freedom and flexibility, right? right. Yeah. Um, and, and I have a why. Why do I do this? Because that's awesome. You know, like it, it, I had a bad experience and I want to be able to have yeah. help people have a great experience. That's, that's fantastic. So the why is the big thing, right? Um, everything needs to start with that. I don't know if that's your philosophy. That's something that I've 
recently started doing is start with why, whether it's in business, sure. whether it's at work, whether it's with people, why are we doing something and then work, work from there. Right. So that's awesome. That's fantastic. Do you, do you uh, follow Dave Ramsey at all? Yeah, I know Dave Ramsey. Yeah. 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 And a lot of people I think follow some of his, um, his technique. Very right? simple, straightforward, understanding, eliminating debt, you know, start, you know, looking at, you know, interest rate differentials or whether you're paying down your mortgage or you're going to be investing in the, in, in, uh, you know, a kind of a balanced or growth fund. And, you know, he has great solid principles to get people started. Yeah. Um, you know Dave Ramsey, or you know of Dave I know Ramsey. of Dave Ramsey. I don't know him personally. Oh. <laughs> I was I was clarifying the statement. <laughs> yeah, 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 fair. <laughs> which, which is cool. Uh, so uh, fast forward for me, um, I now recently learned how to deal with money better. Anyway, I can't say I'm perfect at it. I have so much sure. growth to do. So I have a 17, 18, and now a 20 year old, uh, three girls, and I see some of the same things that they're starting to do. They're, they're overspending, maxing their credit card, which isn't much anyway, but whatever. They're not saving it up, and I, I get frustrated at some of the things that the choices that they're making. What kind of things would you suggest for a parent who's trying to teach their kids good money management principles without hammering down all the time? Don't do this, don't do this, don't do that. Yeah, um, you know, I think it's pretty simple that you can get get a lot done by saying you can still have fun, you can still do the things you want to do, but you got to pay yourself first. Yeah. So every month, we're going to put this amount away in an investment account for you, okay? You need to have this amount of much in a emergency fund. Keep that in savings over here. The rest that comes in, you'll keep paying yourself every month, and then you're going to still have the ability to go through and, and pay your bills every single month, and you're going to have the ability to have your fun discretionary expenses that you want to do, eating out, going out, you have Changs. Changs, all that, right? <laughs> like you, you have the ability and you should have the you want to have the ability to do that. Like, yeah. Yeah, you gotta enjoy life. You can't just um, roll it all away. Yeah, but like you, and then you gotta but you have to pay yourself. Yeah. If you don't pay yourself, um, you're gonna you're always gonna be in trouble. You'll never be able to get out of that cycle. And and honestly, time is your friend. The earlier you start, like I can show you example after example, an eighteen yep. year old starting you know, as simple as 50 bucks a month, you know, to a 30 year old starting at, you know, 500 bucks a month, you know, that 18 year old who started at 50 and did 50 all the way to that point would have the same amount of money at the, as a person potentially who started at 30 with much larger contributions, yeah. you know, so time really is your friend and starting early and starting something like you just have to start. What percentage you typically would tell someone who's 18 to put away from their check, would you say? Yeah, I mean, I typically recommend 20%, okay. right? 20% of what you bring in, you should save. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, so moving on from kids, and I'm not throwing any of my kids under the bus. Uh, <laughs> no, because you I'm said you had it. three, and yeah. 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 some of them are. They have varying <laughs> degrees of difficulty in saving. Uh, so they say in marriage that uh, people marry their opposites, and one's typically a saver and one's typically a spender. Is that the case in your household? Uh, yeah, probably. <laughs> probably. <laughs> Sorry, Christina. <laughs> um, no, she probably admit it. Um, you know, I, I think you know she admitted that you know she didn't grow up in a household that um, where they talked about money and they they um, you know had a structure in place per se and um you know with that being said i mean out of when she got her job she did start a savings plan she, she did automate some of her paying herself yeah. you know but she would tell you that she she, she spent too much you know and yeah. and being young and being single like you have the ability to make those mistakes yeah right you do um should you probably not yeah. She's in the same boat as me. I did the exact right. Same like I mean, you once only you live kids. once. Like yeah. you know, like she had a couple awesome trips to New York. That you yeah. know, if you said, hey, you, you shouldn't do this, and that means you can't do that. I mean, there's some opportunity costs you got to look at. And, but like at the end of the day, if you're always paying yourself. You're gonna put yourself in a pretty good position no matter what. Yeah. Um, staying on the the topic of marriage, um, they say the number one uh, reason for divorce in a marriage is money related. Um, what would, advice would you give to a newly married couple um, to get on the same page uh, immediately? Yeah, I, I think budgets really help 
just because it's very tangible. So for me, I'm just going to cut you off there. Yeah. Uh, as soon <laughs> for a spender, as soon as we hear the word budget, and this happens to me, as soon as you use that word, it's like a keyword that makes my brain go spinny, 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 and I just like just tune out because it seems like a di like for someone who likes to eat, it seems like the word diet. Uh, <laughs> it's like it's like a curse word, <laughs> right? Um. Well, you know, you want to make sure you have common expectations of each other and, and being of the least, your budget can be spend all our money or save all our money or anywhere in between. But as long as you guys are both on the same page, you're probably going to have a good working relationship, right? You yeah. probably agree with that? Yeah, I would. Now, yeah. so you have problems when one person loves to spend, one person loves to save, and then there's disgruntlement in between. Um that's you know, where the fight's going to happen. You know, that's where there could be issues. So, you know, putting that on the table and saying, hey, you know, if we want to, you know, what are our five-year goals from now? What do we want to do? Bing, 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 bing. Okay. Yeah. How are we going to get there? I mean, Dave Ramsey writes this out, and yeah. anyone can follow that simple blueprint and really hammer that out. I mean, this is not new rocket science, but it, no. it takes effort. That's what we're going to say, right? It's it, like a diet. It, right? it like, takes commitment, it takes effort, it takes focus. Yeah. You got to maybe put a couple nights away from Netflix and streaming tonight or this week to be able to crack down on creating a plan. Yeah. Once the plan's in place, go back to watching your shows, doing what you got to do, and just work on executing the plan. But you yeah. got to make time for making this stuff happen. If you don't make it happen, it won't happen. Do you think that your um, dedication to like fitness, football, and like just your dedication to those kinds of things has helped you be dedicated to finances as well? Yeah. Um, you know, my dad taught me early on, if you're going to do anything in life, do it to your best of your ability. Yeah. And that's something that's always resonated with me. And anything I do, I do it to the absolute best that I can. Yeah, that's awesome. And I don't just, I'm just going to try to get it by and just, then I can go <laughs> do what I really, like I literally try to do everything to the best of my ability. No shortcuts. Thanks for watching the Greg and Tim Show clips. Uh, if you want, click the subscribe button right in the middle here. And then there's an episode in front of me and an episode in front of Tim. Click on them. Keep on watching. Keep on watching and share with your friends. Thanks for watching the clip. Cheerio. Cheerio.